This is Death Valley National Park, the hottest place on earth. And this is a fake picture of me inside Death Valley National Park. I couldn't take a real one because my phone said this. Okay, that's not entirely true. It was actually 125 degrees when I visited, and there was a surprisingly long line for pictures. And I gotta be honest, I actually skipped the picture because I didn't want to wait in the heat. But Death Valley does get hot enough to overheat phones. What causes this heat? Let's investigate. Death Valley earned the moniker the hottest place on earth on July 10th, 1913, when it hit a world record air temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit. This record stood for 10 years until 1923 when a town in Libya recorded a temperature of 136.4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, almost a century later, the World Meteorological Organization invalidated this record, stating problems with instrumentation and observational procedures. This meant that Death Valley was once again the hottest place on Earth. But even its record has been questioned by weather historians. They argue that the meteorological conditions in the area at the time make it impossible for a temperature that high to have been recorded. Despite these claims, the WMO still recognizes Death Valley's heat record. Even if they were to invalidate it in favor of more modern and reliably recorded temperatures, Death Valley would still hold the record. In fact, most of the world's reliably recorded hottest temperatures have been recorded inside Death Valley. There's a reason for that. Several factors perfectly aligned create the hottest place on earth with one of them being its location in Eastern California. Surrounded by mountains such as the Sierra Nevada and the Panamint Ranges, Death Valley experiences an intense rain shadow effect. A rain shadow occurs when mountains block the passage of rain-producing weather systems. As wind hits a mountain, it is forced to rise up and over it. During the ascent, the air cools, and since cold air can't hold as much water vapor, the moisture in the wind condenses and falls as rain or snow. This is known as the windward side of a mountain. By the time the wind reaches the opposite side of the mountain, known as the leeward side, it has lost most of its moisture, resulting in significantly less rainfall. This is why storms moving east from the Pacific Ocean rarely reach Death Valley. They have to pass not one, not two, but four mountain ranges to get there, making Death Valley one of the driest places on Earth. With an average annual precipitation of only 2.2 inches, it's drier than Africa's Sahara Desert. The arid climate created by the rain shadow is intensified by another factor contributing to Death Valley's scorching heat. Elevation. Dry air heats up quicker than wet air, and as the dry air descends the leeward side of the mountain, its temperature rapidly increases at a rate of 3 to 5 degrees per 1,000 feet. Now you might be thinking, I thought cold air sinks and hot air rises. Now that's true in small spaces like a bedroom. However, in larger spaces like mountainsides, air warms as it sinks due to the increased air pressure. Air pressure is essentially the amount of air molecules above you exerting force downwards due to gravity. The lower you go, the more air pressure you feel. This affects the air temperature because as air pressure increases, air molecules are compressed, causing them to collide more frequently, which in turn generates heat. This is important because Death Valley sits in a rift valley formed by tectonic activity. As the mountains on either side spring upwards, the land in the middle was slowly forced downwards, creating what is known as a graben. As a result, Death Valley's Badwater Basin sits 282 feet below sea level, making it North America's lowest point and one of the lowest points in the entire world. Oddly enough, this low point is only about 85 miles from the contiguous United States' highest point, Mount Whitney. Standing at over 14,000 feet tall, Mount Whitney plays a significant role in Death Valley's lack of rain. However, it is the Panamint Mountains to the west of Badwater Basin and the Black Mountains to the east that play a big part in trapping heat inside the valley. According to the National Park Service, the heated air rises cools before it can rise over the valley's mountain walls, and is recycled back down to the valley floor. As it descends, it is compressed and heated even more by the low elevation air pressure. So essentially, the hot air stays hot. This extreme heat, combined with the rain shadow, makes it incredibly difficult for vegetation to grow, further contributing to the record-breaking temperatures in the area. The lack of plant cover, paired with the clear skies, allows sunlight to directly heat the ground. The heated ground transfers heat to the air via conduction, and as we know, the hot air remains trapped inside the valley. But if the air reaches temperatures of 130 degrees, how hot does that make the ground? Oh, it gets hot. 
On July 15, 1972, Furnace Creek in Death Valley recorded its hottest ground temperature ever at 201 degrees Fahrenheit, only 11 degrees lower than the temperature at which water boils. And that is just one of its many daunting heat records. In 2001, Death Valley recorded 154 consecutive days of temperatures 100 degrees or above. In 1917, the park had 43 consecutive days of temperatures 120 or above. But Death Valley isn't always hot. Thanks to its desert climate and location, in the winter months, it sees average highs in the mid to high 60s. In extremely rare situations, snow even falls in the area. Higher elevations within the park boundaries will see snow more often than the lower lying areas. But the valley itself almost never sees anything more than a light dusting. The highest recorded snowfall in the valley was a mere half an inch, recorded in 1922. More recently, rain has surprisingly been an issue for Death Valley. In 2023, substantial rainfall following Hurricane Hillary caused the ancient Lake Manly to reappear. Unfortunately, the resulting flash flooding inside the park destroyed roads and made most areas off limits. Then in 2024, back-to-back -back atmospheric rivers drenched Death Valley, causing the lake to reappear once again. This time the rain was less destructive, and the water was just deep enough to allow visitors to enjoy activities very unusual for Death Valley, such as kayaking. But that's a topic for a future video. If you're curious about learning about the deepest lakes in the U.S., click here. But for now, thanks for watching.